Hello fellow vapers, this is Crash with CrashVapes.com. Today I am going to wrap a wick. A couple people, not wrap a wick, roll a wick. A couple people had uh, asked for a little tutorial on this and I figured I'd come in here and do one. I'm going to do it on my iHybrid version 2.1 and um, I'm going to do two different methods or two different wicks. I've been reading, um, some people are saying 60 millimeter which this is about a 60 millimeter tall wick and then three inches. So three inches tall. This is both um, 500 stainless and I'm not going to edit the video. So it's going to be pretty darn long, but I want you guys to see, you know, without editing kind of how long it takes to do it. Um, I haven't rolled one for a while cause I had a bunch left that, uh, that I'd rolled and I'd been kind of going through them. And then today I just undid my iHybrid hybrid, um, wicking coil I had on there that I've had on there for a couple weeks, which I probably shouldn't have done, but oh well. So anyhow, to get started, um, I have this large torch that's not going to fit in picture, but I can kind of do it out down here. And uh, basically, you can do this with little uh, protein, propane or butane torches. But what I do to start is I take the mesh and I torch it off, just so it gets a nice even kind of color to it. And this helps get rid of any of the impurities that you might have gotten on it from touching it and whatnot. So as you can see, I did half of it. Let it cool down a little bit. And I tried to trim this as best possible with some scissors. I can see now that I'm heating up, there's some little pieces sticking off, which isn't too big of a deal. But if you get those um, on your coil, you'll have sh you know hot spots, and that'll cause shorts or shorts will, which will cause hot spots. So there's the one, and that's pretty good. I mean, that's about how much I do it. Just enough to color it. There's a couple spots in here that are different colors, but I don't think that uh, it's going to matter a whole lot. Now, it gets hot. You have to be careful. Don't burn yourself. Okay, so I did that one. I'm going to heat up the other one. Like I said, this one's three inches tall. When I do this, I do try to make it as even as possible with how much temperature I'm putting on it. I don't know if that matters or not, but that's just kind of what I've done. And I don't remember, I saw somebody post about doing it this way on, uh, on ECF. I don't remember who it was that, uh, that got me to first do this, but it was somebody in the iHybrid thread. And I tried it and it worked, so I kept doing it. So now what we're going to do is roll it. So for the three inch long one, I'm going to try to make it solid. And basically, I take it, I can try to get the, the beginning started by kind of bending it over and rolling it. And I know a lot of other people also take it and crease this top over, bend it over on itself so it doesn't have any fray sticking off. But I've noticed that if you get it right when you're cutting it, if there's no little thread sticking, then you're good. You know, if there's no threads off of the mesh sticking out. And it's not a problem. Now, this is the first time that I've rolled a three mil or a three inch wick, so I don't even know if it's going to fit in the hole. But as you can see, I just keep rolling it and rolling it and rolling it until it's tight. Obviously, when you first roll it out, it's going to be um, pretty darn big. As you can see, that is huge. So we got to get it all tightened up. And to do that, you just roll it. You just keep rolling the direction that you were. Roll, roll, roll. It's kind of the time consuming, well, part of the time consuming part. And when I roll it, it always, um, you know, kind of unravels itself. Well, I'll show you if it does it again, you gotta push it back together. Usually when I actually make wicks, I don't think I really measure them. I just kind of eyeball it, which I think a lot of people do. 
as you can see when you roll it this starts to happen then you take this and you push it back in get it flat again we're getting there still quite a big hole in the middle I've always um, left a little bit of a hole for wicking purposes. I don't know if it matters or not. With this 500, I haven't really had it dry out on me. But I found that leaving a little hole in the middle is kind of kind of good. It seems to do its job a little better. So that's pretty darn tight. Let's see. Wow, it's snug right on there. As you can see, that's pretty much exact size of the hole. And you can see the end hole that's in it. Um, I didn't use a paper clip, but just in rolling it, paper clip pretty much fits. Well, it, it does fit all the way through it. So I might try to tighten it up a little bit more. Because that is pretty darn loose. So let's see if we can snug it down. Feel it tightening up a little bit, but not a whole lot. You still see a hole. And actually all the way through. Look at that. So let's see. It still fits. It should fit. Might be a little uh, little more room. I think that's good. So we're going to run with that. Now what I do when I was first making these, when I was first doing these, I um, I did the, the water quenching. But since then, I've, I've stopped doing that quenching. And I don't know if it matters. I haven't really had any issues, so I'm not going to do it this time as well. But let's take this guy. Now at this point, there's a little juice that was in that tank, so we're going to get some bubbles. At this point, I heat it up a couple more times till it's glowing. I try to go for an even glow. I'm doing what we're going to call the bottom here. As you can see, that's pretty darn bright. Let it cool down enough so I can touch it. Flip it around. Do the top part, still pretty darn hot. Nice even glow. The crucial part is to get where it goes through the body of the device and where your coil is going to be, obviously. Get this one more time. Um, it's best to concentrate more on the top half than the bottom half for, for oxidization to make sure it's correct. The part that's just sitting in the tank, it's not doing anything but sitting in the tank. So now we'll take a little juice. So I heated that up about, what, two times? Take some juice. I've got some loaded in a syringe here. It's still hot, so you're going to see it smoke a little bit. This is um, roughly a 50-50 blend juice that I got in here. Um, it's uh, the Freedom Smoke USA stuff. So it's not just straight. It does have flavoring and nicotine. Light it off. I've seen some people say that they light it, blow it out, light it, blow it out, light it, blow it out until it doesn't do that anymore. I found I just do it till it's burning my fingers and then I blow it out, or if it goes out on its own. Looks like we're going to be okay. That's still going down there at the bottom. Not one out. Make sure it's good. Still a nice even glow. The color is another thing you want to look at. The color is pretty even for me. Do a little bit more juice on it. Obviously, when you do it hot, it's going to uh, 
sputter on you. It's looking pretty even. I might run with it. Let's see. Come on, camera. Get this to focus in. There you go. Well, anyhow, I think it's kind of, you can kind of see how even it is. See down here at the bottom by my fingers, that's where the juice stopped. We'll light it one more time. It's looking pretty good. This is another time when you can check just to look for little fuzzies that are hanging off, little pieces from that the end where you cut. And this looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is um, I take the bottom and I always just do a little angled cut down here, just like so. Check it, get it hot a little bit. Like I said, you you know you don't want it touching the bottom of your tank or of your atomizer. If it does and it shorts out, then you've got a, a short, which is obviously not good. But I say that's good, so let's try it. Don't know if it's going to work, but we'll try it out. So we'll take our device, slide it down in there if I don't drop it. And it's a little tight going in, which means my wick is crooked, meaning it... Uh, it's fatter around the base than the top, but as long as I can get it in there, it should be all right without damaging it. There we go. So the wick is in. Oh, I should turn autofocus on. Sorry about that. Wick is in. Does have a hole. It is a fat wick though. This was three inches of mesh. So full three inches, nice and thick. Now for the fun part. I have previously made a little piece of my twisted 32 gauge canthal here. I'm not gonna be able to see that, but it is twisted 32 canthal. And um, let's just put it in and make a coil and hope all goes well. So on my, on my last video, you guys saw me do a coil. Um, get this started here and take your your bottom screw get that in there take your coil wrap around your base get it as close to the wick as possible tighten it up I didn't get it all the way under there There we go, snug it up. I don't like the way that uh, came out from underneath the nut. Screw. Okay, there we go. Right up next to it, touching. And then we'll take it, and I'm gonna do my 4-3 uh, my wrap here. One, two, Three, four. Grab my screw for the top. I do use the open draw screw. I tried it with the tight draw screw when I first got the device, and I don't know if I really noticed the difference between the two as much as I thought I would. Um, maybe the drip tip has stuff to do with that as well. But I use the open. So there we go. Kind of got it in there. Pull it up off the bottom just a tad. You can see, kind of hard to tell, but I've got just a little bit of space in there at the bottom. Just enough so it's got some air. And now, slide a battery in it. 
I have a 350 here. It's a little 18 350 that I had in earlier, so it's probably got some uh, some time on it. And we'll see what happens. I'll take it off autofocus. Okay. Let's see how this works. A little hot spot right there at the top. I've got this little poking device that I use. Push the wick over a little bit too. Still a little hot spot right there. It's fighting me. Push the wick over a little more. Push this right there, put a little kink in it. Oh yeah, look at that, it's starting to even out. Starting to. Getting there. interesting that it's not getting those bottom two. Let's try putting a little. Must be got a, um, having a little short here at the top of the wick. Oh yeah, there we go. Now it's evening. So they're definitely uneven, and this is hot. Let's try our newer battery here. Got one fresh off the charger in my pocket. And we'll check the ohms on this coil as well. Whoa. Big hot spot right there at the top. Right there. There we go. That's looking pretty good. I mean, I'll mess with this a little bit more as time goes on. But as you you know, we've done a coil before. We know how it works. Snip off these little ends. And then with the, with the bottom one, I like trying to push it out of the way as much as possible. I've got a little mark on that bottom screw. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I shorted it out. I can't remember what the hell I was doing, but I shorted it and it made a little mark there. Clip off the top piece and then I take this, take my, my scissors kind of right at the top, just cut it. And then you take, make sure that it's still somewhat round. Check your coil, still looking pretty good. So, let's see what ohm we have. Just grab my ohm meter here. And when I touch these together, I am getting 0 0.7, 0 0.6. Let's just see where we are. We'll call it 0.6. So this wire is a 32 gauge canthal twisted 4.3 wrap. I'm showing 1.7 on the meter minus the 0.6, so we're 1.1 ohm. Before I was doing this, it wasn't um, it wasn't zeroing right, so I was giving wrong numbers. Now I'm sitting at 1.6, so it's actually around a 1 ohm coil which is getting near the limits of, um, of the batteries. Yeah, 0. 0.6 like this on there, 1.6. So that's an ohm coil. That's a strong coil. Um, it makes killer vapor. You know, I've, I've totally enjoyed having such an, a strong vapor out of it, and uh, it works quite well. 
Let's just fill this guy up and see how it vapes and wicks. As most of you know, when you make a new coil or, or mesh, um, the flavor is not 100%. Take some, shoot it down the middle here. But once it breaks in, after about a tank or so, it starts getting a lot better. Just put in a little bit of that. Try to leave a gap with a fresh coil. You want to leave a gap at the top um, for it to get some air in there. Oxygen helps uh, get everything wicking right. Let's just check that one more time. Make sure I've got some somewhat even vapor. Looks pretty good. We'll try it out. I think it's just amazing. As you can see, I mean, with this coil set up, being the, the ohms that it is in the wrap, it's just it's phenomenal on the, the amount of vapor. Flavor's good, amazing, even for a new coil and wick. That worked really well. Still tons. It's it's wicking. Starting to heat up just now. So as you can see, I mean, obviously, if you hold it down, it's gonna run it run itself dry. But if you have it, uh, you know, at an angle, it should be wicking pretty well. Starting to get a little heat right at the top one there. But after a day or so. This thing should be champ. That's all I got. Thanks for stopping by. Um, I, I hope this helps you if you've been having any issues. If you have any comments, concerns, or otherwise, feel free to post down below or over on my blog at crashvapes.com. And um, that's it. Thanks for coming. Have a great day.